Hey guys, it's Ellie, and this is part five of the Mastering Lightroom series. Today I'm gonna to be covering how to use the graduated filter, also known as the gradient filter. So if you're a fan of taking scenic or landscape shots, you're most likely going to really love this tool. All right, so let's just get started here. So to access the filter, you can click right here. It looks like a little rectangle. You can also hit M on your keyboard. This is gonna go ahead and bring up the panel here. And so all of these adjustments will work to create different effects within your photos. If you're not familiar with these, I suggest watching the Mastering Lightroom tutorials one and two, and I cover all of the basic effects and adjustments there. Okay, so basically the graduated filter allows you to apply one or two or how many of these that you'd like to a section of your image in a very flowing and natural way. So there aren't going to be any harsh or super defined lines when using this tool, which is really, really great. On this image, let's say that I wanna go ahead and brighten up my sky a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my exposure. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hover over my image and wherever I click and start dragging, my adjustment will be applied there. So the adjustment will show where I clicked and then it'll subtly fade out towards the bottom line. And this tool doesn't just work from top to bottom. You can move it around accordingly so that it's vertical. You can also flip it so that the effect goes from bottom to top. But either way you move it, it's always going to start off strongest on the first line, fade towards the middle, and then end on the last line. Now, this tends to wiggle around a lot and it can get a bit difficult to place. So what I like to do is hold the shift key down as I'm moving it around and that will keep it straight. Now once I let go of my mouse, that gradient filter will be in place. If I want to make changes, I can just go back and click on the top line or the bottom line and move both around. If I want to rotate it, I can just move my mouse over the center line and that will allow me to rotate it. If I want to move it around as a whole, I can also do that by just clicking on the dot in the middle. So now if I'd like to add any more effects to the sky within that gradient filter area, I can do that. So let's say I wanna bring up my exposure some more. Um, if I wanna add some contrast, I can do that. If I want to play around with my clarity or my highlights, all of those changes can be done within this area. And as long as I have this gradient filter selected, I can go ahead and make as many changes as I'd like. Now, something that I really like here is this tool called Show Selected Mask Overlay. Now, if I check it, it's going to add color to show exactly where your adjustment has been applied. Now, I find this super helpful when it comes to being a little bit more precise. If you click Shift O on your keyboard, you can also change the color of it. Uh, I'm a fan of red, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at that. So now I'm going to go down here, and right now it's set to always, which is what I prefer. So when always is selected, the filter is always going to show. However, if you select auto, it will only show when your mouse is hovering directly over it. With never, it's never going to show, which I don't really understand the point of, honestly, but to each their own. You can also use selected, and what this is is that basically you can overlap multiple filters over your image, and whichever gradient filter it is that you're currently working on at the moment will be considered your selected one, and that is going to be the one that will show. Right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and place this back on always. Now, what if I want to have more precise control over where my filter is being placed? I can do that easily using the handy brush tool. So I'll just go ahead and click on that. And then when I click on it, while the gradient filter I'm working on is active and showing, the same settings that the gradient filter has will be transferred over to the brush. So for example, let's say that I want to add some of the brightness to this section of the water. All I have to do is paint over it using my brush and the filter will be applied there. Now, if I check this show selected mask overlay section, we can see now that it's been applied. So now let's say that I want this area of the sky to be more intense. So I want it to be a little bit darker. In that case, I would want to remove some of the brightness that the adjustment applied. So I can select my brush and now set it to erase 
and just paint over that area and it will begin to remove the effect. And now if I go ahead and checked my show selected mask overlay button again, we can see that it's been removed from that area. All right, so now for the fun part. So basically I'm gonna go ahead and put into practice everything that I've covered about this tool so far by using it to edit a few photos, beginning with this one. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and add a bit of contrast to this photo using my tone curve tool. And I'm also going to hide in the overall exposure. Now I'm going to click on my gradient filter by either clicking on this rectangle or hitting M on my keyboard. So I want to brighten up my sky first. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag a filter over this area. And then I'm going to bring up both my exposure and my highlights. And now I want to add a little bit more drama to the water. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new filter down here from bottom to top. And I'm going to click right here, which in my opinion looks like a little cute envelope. And I think this section is really fun. So basically you can select a color here and that color will be added to your photo. So I'd like the water to be more of a deep blue. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it around here. And I'm also going to increase my contrast, my whites, and my exposure. Now I want to go ahead and add a little bit more depth, a little bit more drama to the forefront of the water here by adding another shade of blue there. So I'm going to go ahead and create another filter down here. And then I'm going back to my select a color panel again. And this time around, I'm going to choose yellow to give that bit of water more of a greenish blue tone. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this. Now I'm just gonna go back to my basic adjustments panel and I'm going to increase my contrast a bit. And here's the before and the after. So yeah, I do this a lot with the gradient filter tool. If you have a photo that you like to just add a boost of color to, it works really great for that. Okay, so now as for this image, I'm going to repeat the same first steps by increasing my exposure and adding a bit of contrast with the tone curve tool. And now I'm heading over to my gradient filter tool once more. The first thing I wanna do here is make the water more blue. So I'm adding a filter down here and then heading over to the select a color section. I'm going to go with an aqua blue. Okay, and if I click over here, I can see the before and the after. And whoa, a huge difference there. I really like how blue the water is looking. And now I wanna go ahead and do the same thing in the last photo and make the forefront of the water a different tone. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another filter down here and go back to the select a color section. And this time around, I'm going to go with a deeper blue. So now I wanna go ahead and work on my sky. So I'm going to add a filter up here from top to bottom, and then I'm going to lower my highlights and bring up my contrast. I also want to warm up the sky a bit, so I'm going to increase my temperature, and then I'm gonna go ahead and increase my saturation and dehaze my clouds by a bit, okay. Now I think I wanna go ahead and increase my exposure by a little bit, as well as play around with the dehaze a little bit more. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna head back to the basic adjustments panel and I'm going to increase my contrast and exposure. And I'm also going to warm up the overall image by increasing the temperature by a tad. Okay, so looking at this, I think I want to add a little bit more warmth to a part of the water. So I'm gonna head back to the gradient tool and create a new filter down here. And I'm going to increase both my temperature as well as go to the select a color tool and choose a warm tone. I'll go with yellow. Now, I don't want this warmth to necessarily show in the forefront, more so closer to the bridge area. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my brush tool and make sure it's in erase mode. And then I'm just going to paint over the image to remove some of that effect from the front of the water. Okay, 
So looking at this, I think I want to add some more warmth down here so it flows a little bit more seamlessly. So I'm going to activate this filter once more by clicking on it. And then I'm going to click on my brush tool and make sure that this time it is not set to erase. And then I'm going to use it at a light flow to add a bit more warmth gradually into the water so that it looks a little bit more natural. I have my show selected layer mask checked on so that I can better see where exactly the effect is being applied. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just heading back to my basic adjustment section and I'm going to lower my saturation and increase my highlights, my shadows, and my whites by a bit. All right, so here is the before and the after. All right, so here we have this photo, and typically I use a graduated filter on scenic photos, but if I'm looking to quickly add a bit of light into a portrait shot, more often than not, this tool works really well for that. So first I'm going to increase my exposure and my shadows, and now I'm heading to the filter again, and this time I'm going to add a filter diagonally from the top left corner towards the middle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and increase my exposure as well as my shadows. Now I want this light to have a warmth to it, so I'm going to go ahead and increase my temperature. Okay, so that looks pretty good, and here is the before and the after. Again, just a really quick and easy way to add a bit of light into a photo. Okay, so I think that this covers it. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. As always, it's really, really appreciated. And I'll see you in the next Mastering Lightroom tutorial, which will be tutorial number six. If you'd like to watch it now, you can find it right here. Have a great day, guys, and talk soon. Bye.